Hello, everyone. My name is Marius van Lee, and I would like to talk about how we are working towards supporting CWL tools and workflows in Galaxy. I suspect some of you have heard about Galaxy and have a rough idea what you can do with Galaxy. So I'll try to keep this short and just briefly mention a few things that you can do in Galaxy that may be of interest to you. Galaxy is an open source web-based interactive data analysis platform that supports defining and executing workflows. On the left, you see what I think is the most common view you'll be seeing as a Galaxy user. On the left side, you have the tool panel from which you can choose a tool that you want to run. When you click on one of the tools, the tool interface shows up in the center panel where you can select input data sets and parameters that will pass on to the underlying command line interface. Mm -hmm. On the right side, you'll see the history panel where you can see and interact with the data sets you've created by executing tools or workflows. Um, users can choose to extract workflows from histories and then refine these workflows in the workflow editor that you can see in the second screen chart here. You've seen the Galaxy web server in the previous slide, but Galaxy is much more than the server component and the client interface. There are many different geographically distributed large public server instances, as well as many smaller dedicated instances that serve specialized tool sets. In addition, Galaxy uses another project called Pulsar for remote, distribute, remote distributed compute. UseGalaxy.eu, for instance, is using Pulsar to run jobs in several different European countries, as well as Australia. UseGalaxy.org also allows Pulsar to send jobs to Texas Advanced Computing Center, the Jetstream Cloud, and the Bridges Supercomputer. But the most important part about Galaxy is the community of Galaxy users, administrators, instructors, and developers. One important gathering point is the Galaxy Training Network, which hosts many tutorials for different types of data analysis, not all of which are used in Galaxy. The Galaxy Training Network also organizes training events, such as the upcoming Smorgasbord, for which we've registered more than 1,800 participants at this point. Another big factor is the active community of tool developers that are creating high quality tool wrappers. We currently have more than 8,000 repositories where each repository hosts one or more tools on the tool shed from which Galaxy administrators can install tools. The Galaxy server with the most installed tools at this point is usegalaxy.eu with more than 2,800 installed tools where each tool has on average three installed versions. With this wealth of available tools, it is often a matter of minutes to design a basic workflow in the workflow editor for good and for bad. So let's take a small peek at how a Galaxy tool is defined. On the left, uh, you, you can see the definition of a section um, here, which is a collapsible section. So that um, is rendered in the tool interface here. So you can see <clears throat> You can see that this section can be expanded and expanded. Um, and one use of these sections is to group related options by topic. Another use is to hide advanced settings that should be available but are accessed infrequently. Um, this makes complex tools easier to use. Um, this is even more important as Galaxy tools usually expose every option that the underlying command line interface tool exposes. So there are often a lot of options. On the flip side, this is more work for tool authors and means that we are changing the nesting of our parameters to accommodate the presentation and the user interface. If you look closely, you'll also see that all parameters have a label tag. Um, so you can see this uh, here, and here, and here. And um, these are used to display with bold text in the user interface and the help text that is displayed on the parameter. And that should help users to select an appropriate value. Um, to generate the command line, Galaxy uses the Cheetah templating language, which has a Python-like syntax and can import and execute arbitrary Python functions. That is one of the reasons that only administrators can install tools in Galaxy. Um, so next about the Galaxy workflow language. So Galaxy's native workflow name, which was never meant to be human readable. It is just a representation of the state in the database and there's no formal schema. Um, additions are pretty much ad hoc and uh, diffs between workflow versions are quite hard to read. Um, and so there are some, yeah, very unfortunate things like for instance, the tool state here is just, um, well, 
JSON inside JSON. Uh, connections are expressed as just uh, numeric numbers between uh, individual steps. So I don't know what two is and means. And this is really difficult to reason about. Um, so in fact, we've actually modeled the next version of the uh, Galaxy workflow language after uh, CWL, if you're um, interested. Uh, so with that in mind, let's have a look at a few reasons why adopting CWL makes sense for Galaxy. So there is great uh, documentation. It is a pleasure to code against the performance tests. And one of the things we've traditionally been very bad at is versioning changes in our workflow format. Well, we do have a version, but it's 0 0.1 for about 15 years now. So that should tell you a lot. Um, Galaxy's execution model is pretty similar to CWL's. And the scope of what Galaxy wants to enable on a workflow and tool level are similar enough. And of course, having an actual standard will provide tremendous value to Galaxy and Galaxy's user base. Um, so what was our strategy? So John Chilton uh, started work on a Galaxy fork in 2015 while CWL was still in draft phase. And he created a large branch that contained a significant portion of code that would support a good subset of CWL. To support CWL tools in Galaxy, we've subclassed the standard Galaxy tool class and used CWL tool to load up CWL two descriptions and to build up the necessary parameters. Then when it's time to execute a tool, Galaxy will template a command using CWL tool and then use a small script to move outputs to the expected places. Support for CWL workflows was added directly to the core Galaxy workflow logic. In terms of development, we, and that mostly means John, um, have worked on the CWL project in the tried and true method of introducing small incremental changes into core Galaxy where ideally it would be useful on its own or be a clear improvement over what we had been doing previously. So while preparing this talk, I went through the CWL related pull requests on Galaxy and there are just far too many to talk about. But three key pieces that came out of the CWL branch uh, were support for non-data parameters and sub workflows, expression tools, and expression tools that enable uh, conditionals, even though currently that's a very Galaxy way of doing this. And these were great additions on their own, and they really helped move away from the ad hoc, copy pasted, and slightly modified workflows uh, towards truly reusable and publishable workflows. So after the initial phase, we struggled a little to find enough time to wrap up the work and get it into core Galaxy. Uh, we were lucky enough to get together at various bio hackathons and another hybrid virtual hackathon um, in Berlin. So here's a mile high view of the implemented features. So we have uh, non-data and complex outputs. These are implemented as actual JSON files within Galaxy. Uh, we have expression tools and inline JavaScript requirements are supported. We got secondary files, uh, envi requirements, sub workflows are supported. Um, overriding tool inputs is currently supported via literal values and uh, simple expressions, but not yet default files. Um, tools and workflows are imported and persisted in the database, um, so we don't keep them on disk. Uh, multi input scattering uh, works. But the only scatter method that currently is implemented is dot product. Um, but we will continue working on this. And we have uh, partial local support. Um, so the current status is that after the last bio hackathon, we opened the pull request that we bring in the core CWL functionality into Galaxy. And as I mentioned before, many of the smaller pieces were already merged into Galaxy. So this PR is relatively small and focused. All of the Galaxy tests are passing, and only 12 of the required tests for CWL 1.2 are not yet passing. So this is looking quite promising. Um, that said, there are, of course, a lot of challenges remaining. Um, Galaxy tools have historically only been installable by administrators because you can read and write to any file that the user that runs the Galaxy process has access to. So this is, of course, different with CWL tools. In combination with containerized execution, I do think that in principle, we could allow users to bring their own tools. However, Galaxy is a free service, and there is room for misuse. And if there's room for misuse, it will happen. So for instance, we allow running Jupyter Notebooks as interactive Galaxy tools uh, currently. And our admins are playing whack a mole with people running crypto miners there. So we definitely need to figure this out. 
Another challenge is that traditionally um, the administrator of a Galaxy server has decided how many resources to allocate to a given tool. Um, so CWL's resource requirements will definitely go a long way in lifting that burden off of admins. However, I anticipate that this will require a significant amount of work, of work to be passed on to the various um, job runner plugins that we maintain and that do the actual uh, heavy lifting of submitting the jobs. Um, so Galaxy has traditionally been operating on data sets um, whose ownership and storage is tied to a history. So in order to support workflow and tool default files and directories, um, we'll create a different type of data set that is directly related to the workflow of the tool um, and whose storage must be managed in a different way. Um, we also have some additional work uh, remaining to fully support conditionals with subworkflow steps. And one interesting problem that I think we might have some space to talk about um, at one of the panels mm -hmm. is that we're not quite sure how to model um, things that only affect the user interface, such as the sections I showed earlier. This would likely be an important issue to solve if we want tool developers that are predominantly interested in writing Galaxy tools uh, to start writing CWL tools. And of course, there's a lot of user interface components that would need minor changes. So with all of that in mind, uh, this is our rough roadmap to letting users run CWL on public Galaxy servers. So we would like all required conformance tests to pass. Um, then once we merge it, CWL support will be off by default and admins can uh, decide whether or not they want to enable it. Uh, then if enabled, um, admins will initially, only admins will initially be able to import uh, tool descriptions. So we plan to merge the CWL work into Galaxy for the um, next release. So that would be the 2205 release, um, but that is an ambitious goal. And we, it's our ambition, but we may not be able to make it. Um, so we'll have to see. Um, and we aim to demo this at the Galaxy Community Conference um, on our testing server, test.galaxyproject.org. And we will only do this once we have merged the CWL work into Core Galaxy. So yeah, I think there's real potential and excitement in bringing the Galaxy and CWL communities closer together. For authors of CWL tools and workflows, I believe it is a nice thing that you can just say, well, try it on Galaxy. And as a user, you can just go and do it. I mean, the account is free. Um, you can do real work there. You have some access to serious resources um, and you don't need to touch the command line. You can really just give it a try. And conversely, I also think there's a lot to be gained for the Galaxy community in terms of standardization and supporting a workflow language that runs on more than one platform. And on the infrastructure side, uh, things, um, we do already have a lot of projects that are important to both communities. Um, and I think we can further extend this. So I've, I've put out some of the projects that I think um, there is great overlap and where we currently are already sharing or could be sharing resources. Um, yeah. So um, I'd like to especially thank John Chilton who started this work, um, Nicolas Soranzo and Michael Crusoe who've organized the CWL Galaxy hackathons and made great contributions over the last couple of years and everyone who has contributed to the effort. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll be able to try CWL on Galaxy soon.